You guys, it's your girl JoJo coming to you again in yet the same outfit. Okay, it's been a slow, it's been a good Sunday actually. It's been an easy Sunday and I had some time to get some videos off. So, I was laying here chilling and I just happened to come across Ready to Love. So, I watched it and y'all, I'm eating crow. I am eating the humblest of pies because... The show actually held my attention. It was pretty good. I laughed at the TV. I yelled at the TV. All a good indication of a fairly good show. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to turn. The last couple of minutes is on and I didn't want to be distracted. So, yeah, the show was pretty good. Uh, we'll see what the next coming episodes will do. But the first two episodes held my attention. So, it is a dating show based in Atlanta, hosted by nephew Tommy I did not know that nephew Tommy had been married for 33 years so give it up for that that is definitely something to be proud of and he's the one that's going to be leading everybody so there is a dating shortage in Atlanta there's 20 women to every one man yes let me let me say it for you again 20 to 1 so all y'all folks thinking about packing up and moving to Atlanta like I always tell people if you're going to be moving to Atlanta you need to already have your your situation in place if you're a woman, because if you don't and you think you're about to go out there and meet somebody, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm just saying, you know, be ready to hit the ground running. That's it. <laughs> it's a lot of competition there. A lot of beautiful women, if you did not notice from watching this here show and a lot of successful women. So it's not like you're going to be bringing anything to the table that a lot of other women are not. And I can honestly say I'm I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. So I'm about an hour and probably 20 minutes away from Atlanta. So I have a lot of family there, a lot of friends there. And some of the ladies have told me it's very difficult. I have a lot of single friends in Atlanta that are still looking and still hopeful. Um, but then I have homegirls who are in relationships too. So that's not to say that it doesn't happen. But like I said, you just, you, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. The show is based kind of like real life. The women are outnumbering the men because that's the situation there. And not only are the women outnumbering the men, but before the first episode ended, they had to eliminate three other men and they were already at a shortage. So the men, knowing that there's a possibility they're going to be eliminated, they all are kind of just putting their best foot forward. So I'm not holding anybody's name to firm memory because there's going to be eliminations going on probably up until like episode four or five. So if these people going to be gone, I'm not even about to make no list of all these folks. We'll just remember the final folks, okay? So, and you can already kind of see who that might be. So as we get into the show, you kind of get to know who's who, you know, who's the funny guy, you know, who's the guy with the body showing himself off, which happens to be a guy named Aaron. Y'all, funny story is Aaron is actually from South Carolina. I can't remember if he was graduating when I was in middle school or when I was a freshman. I can't really remember, but I just, I think I was in the eighth grade because I had made the cheerleading squad. And even though you were still technically in middle school, you got to, you had to go over and practice. You know what I'm saying? So you had to go over there and have meetings and stuff. And I can remember he had walked out of the locker room, y'all. He had no shirt on. And I'm telling you. He was fine then, and he's still fine now. Now, he wouldn't know me from a can of paint, most definitely, but um, I do remember Aaron from back in the day, and he has aged very well, but, you know, he's kind of the charismatic one, and then you got the truck driver guy. I think his name was Alex. You know, he was the funny, the witty one, always knew what to say. Somebody named, I think it was Kiba. I think he was African. Kiba, um, tall, dark skin. you know, also kind of witty. You had Devin. You had some other people, you guys, I can't remember everybody's name. And then you also had a pastor. Yes, yes, you had Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, I like, but Pastor Chris, you know, you just, one thing that you kept saying was, you know, it's two different personas. You know, my life just isn't the church. It's, it's two different things. It's two different. There's a Chris in the church and there's this other Chris. And I got what he was trying to say, like, Everything in my life is not about church, but you got to be real careful with stuff like that because then it started to sound like you live in a double life. I, and I don't want you to get that, you know, coming across on TV, Pastor Chris, but just know whatever comes with us now, you brought it on yourself because you decided you wanted to go on a dating show and, you know, be other Chris. So don't, don't be, I don't want to hear none of that. You know, we judging you and all of that because you went on the show. So people going to get their opinions. Now that's all I'm going to say about it. Had a different mix of men. You also had a different mix of women. Uh, 
There were some things that I noticed early on in the show, and I'm going to comment on a few things. Um, I, I think it's interesting that women always say that men look outward. They don't look at what's on the inside. They want the big booty girls, the girls with the long weave. They want this. They want that. They don't want a, like a real, a real woman, as a lot of people would say. But women have those aspects and character traits about them, too, because... So many of the women, no matter what their age, okay, everybody on the show is 30 to 50, right? No matter how old they were, they were still drawn to certain characteristics, certain charisma, certain body types in these men. And so I was just like, we can't keep harping on the brothers about their expectations when our behavior shows that we want a certain thing too. Now, everybody there was attractive, you know, in... in it, you know, by a certain standard, depending on what you like. I couldn't get it out. But I just noticed a certain aspect that women were having that we tend to complain about, but we also do it, okay? And uh, I'll dive more into that in just a moment. So out of everybody, you saw some connections being formed, you know, Stormy, Pastor Chris. Um, I can't remember her name, but she had the 18-year-old son and Michael, they were spending so much time together that folks were just like, do they even want to be on the show? They could just leave together now. <laughs> but you saw some connections being formed. My favorites out of everyone, um, as far as the women go, my favorite was Ashley. I think that was her name. Dark skin, full lips, pretty skin, short hair. Just pretty to me. She was like an unconventional pretty, like you wouldn't expect it. I love full lips on a woman because my lips y'all funny story my lips back before I had my braces you can even go back and look at my old videos look at my mouth and how my face was shaped back when I had my braces versus after you lose your over overbite your your face it changes your face structure so my lips don't look as full as they did when I had an overbite <laughs> so I kind of miss my overbite for that reason but I don't miss my gap um but she had beautiful full lips. She was funny. And she had this little thing going on with this eye right here. And when it did it, I was like, oh, my gosh, my eye does the same thing, girl. We we here. We like sisters. Um, we later find out that Ashley has been through some things in her dating life. You know, she's dated the wrong type of dudes and, you know, been manipulated and stayed just to settle and not be lonely. And Ashley, girl, we probably are more alike than you know. So if you ever see this video, hit me up. We could... Come on down to Houston. We can hang out. As far as the guys go, my actual favorite, you guys, was Daryl, the quiet one. He actually was my favorite, and I'll get back to him in just a moment. But when it comes to the type of men who are probably drawn to me or the type of men that I tend to attract, and this is not to say that either of these men would want me if they saw me, but I tend to attract the Michaels. Y'all remember Michael, the one who was going around making sure everybody knew that he wanted some kids, preferably twins? The Michaels and Devin. Those are the type of guys I tend to attract. Now, Devin, honey, I, I think I heard black men smile 200,000 times. So I think he really came just to promote his business. And that's cool. You know, we all got a thing that we trying to do. So do what you do. But I tend to attract a lot of Devins of the world. And it's always on a whole bunch of, you know, hey, queen, how you doing? I was feeling your energy. You had this vibe. You had this about you. And I'm going to tell you how I know it's all BS, okay? I'm not saying that you don't feel vibes and energy, but you was not feeling a vibe or energy when you came and approached me because if you did, you would have known that that vibe and that energy that you feeling is not, we don't have the same one. There's We have nothing in common. We, <laughs> if only you knew. But I think I come off as having more like a, a earthy, natural, expressive feel, you know, my hair, the wraps, um, the way that I dress, all of that. I think that that comes off as somebody who, you know, is more universal principle and spiritual. And I do have some of those traits about me, but not, not in the way that most people <laughs> would think that approach me with that. So yeah, that I get approached by a lot of that. I get approached by a lot of hoteps, and I'm no shade, fake hoteps, okay, because I don't want to shade the real ones, but a lot of those fake ones approach me, and I, I just don't be having time for that. So, yeah, not saying that Devin is one. I'm just saying he has a look. He just got a look, okay? It came time for eliminations. Who ended up getting eliminated was Daryl, Devin, and <laughs> Paco, and I knew immediately they were not going to like Paco. As soon as I saw Paco putting on his hat 
And walking up to the house, I was just like, they're not going to like him. They're not going to like him. And it didn't have anything to do with his look. Because he was an older guy, and you could tell. But it had everything to do with the way that... Pop Popo's very chauvinistic. And you could tell just from his description of himself. When he said that he don't want to be the old dude in the club, he's just kind of ready to settle down and find somebody... That When guys say stuff like that to me, I always picture a dude who used to have a juice, don't have a juice no more, don't have the energy to chase the juice, not trying to pay these young girls to be around him. He's just going to find him somebody to settle down with, and whenever he feel like stepping out, he might, but he needs somebody taking care of home, feeding him, and making sure that as he get old, somebody there to t help him with his medicine and all of that other stuff that he might need in a woman. Wash his clothes, you know, stuff like that. He's not settling down really because he wants to, but because he feels like he's older and he needs to. And to me, it's two different things. Wanting to settle down and feeling like you need to settle down. Those are two totally different things. So I knew they wasn't going to like Paco. Paco cheated in both his first and second marriage and uh, believes that if a woman cheat, men can bounce. And if a, a man cheat, then women are more forgiven. And that's just what it is. I'm not saying that it's right. But that's just what it is. And you know, the women, even though we know the truth, <laughs> the women wasn't trying to hear it, okay? They weren't about to admit it on TV, so brother had to go. So I knew he was going to be out of here. But I was upset that they got rid of Daryl because I always feel like every, every person, every man doesn't have to be a type A personality. That's not what every woman is drawn to. And it seemed like a lot of the dudes there were very, you know, type a type men you know very take charge type men daryl he didn't seem like he was that type but that doesn't mean that he was a weak man it just probably meant that you know huh, he doesn't mind allowing his woman to be more vocal in certain situations and some women that works for and i know that a lot of women always say i can't date no weak man i can't date this i can't date that there's a difference between dating somebody weak and just dating somebody who has a more laid back personality. They're two totally different things. And when I saw Daryl, he was the type of guy that I actually would be drawn to and I would actually want to have a conversation with. But I know that I'm not the type of woman that Daryl would approach. And the reason why is because <laughs> I told my friend this some months ago. I don't think it's that there's a problem with dating. I think a lot of us want people who don't want us. And Daryl probably wants a woman that's more extroverted, that's more open, that's more a little more brash, a little more outgoing. And I'm not that woman. So he probably wouldn't approach me because it's just it's just not he's looking for somebody that's probably the opposite of who he is. And, you know, a lot of times you miss out because you're looking for something that's not really going to mesh well with your personality. Not all the time. Sometimes, though, that the opposites definitely work. Definitely. But um, I felt bad for Daryl because I felt like he really wanted to stay there and get to know the ladies. He was a nice guy and he got friend zone, which is funny to me because we as women are always complaining that we want a friend. And so y'all voted somebody like Daryl off. And somebody even like Devin off. Y'all voted the two of them off and you kept the other men on. But these other men are the type of men that you are normally used to dating. You see what I'm saying? So if it hasn't worked, what you've done before hasn't worked. Why do you think that choosing those same type of men again is going to work? Why not choose somebody who initially you don't know if that's what you really would have really liked. But it turns out he's a really good dude. So I hated that they didn't give Daryl and Devin a chance to kind of show a little bit more of their personalities. But I understand it's a competition. I understand it's a dating show. But Daryl, Daryl definitely would have been somebody I kept around. Because if you've already got a friendly personality, then I know that you can, you can work your way to a really good relationship. Because we're always saying friendship is the foundation, but then we act opposite. Let's talk about the fact that who was overcasting? Because I felt like even personality-wise and looks-wise, these men were very similar. You know, like, where were the light-skinned men? And this is not me saying that because I like light-skinned men because I don't have a type. Okay? I like all men. Short, tall, dark, light. I've dated outside of my rates. Let, let's get it. You know? <laughs> I don't have a preference. But it just seemed like there was a, a type of, you know, man that maybe... Somebody on the castings crew had in mind, and that's really all they selected. You know, it was all a bunch of tall, tall, dark, and handsome 
going on. And I was just like, now where are the other, where are the other, you know, lighter persuasion men? What if that's your preference? Or, you know, I felt like it was a bunch of taller dudes. It, it was just, yeah, y'all, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the casting for this. Anyway, when we get to the second episode and uh, we know who's eliminated, uh, Pastor Chris almost on the chopping block, but he ended up staying. But they all went on these individual dates and kind of got to know each other a little better. There was one lady, um, I think her name was Dr. Lexi or something. She wore a lot of makeup, a lot of makeup. Like, I'm talking about, are you supposed to blend the highlight in? It was very Rudolph. And um, when she went on a date, Michael commented on the fact that she had on a lot of makeup. So she was willing to show pictures of herself without it and basically told us that it's not a, a mask or anything she's trying to be extra it's just what she does it's how she's feeling and that's a lot of women like that you know you either can deal with it or you can't just depending on what kind of dude you are um michael had his big country feet sitting up on top of i mean i know it was his house but i was like bro get your feet down <laughs> for a minute but um they end up going on like this double date kind of weird double date but Melinda was there, Alex was there, Dr. Lexi, and then there was Michael and Aaron. And they were all just kind of sitting around chilling, talking about what happened in their last relationships. This is when, did I say Alex? I think her name's Ashley. Began to get very emotional and talk about what she had been through for years and years. And she had to find out who she was. And, you know, you're just very, very transparent. She ended up crying. And I was just like, Ashley, girl, now you got to... You got to reel that in. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with crying in front of a man. But sometimes when you get to crying too early, they start to wonder what they can and cannot say to you. You know, they got to walk on eggshells. So I don't want her to get that persona. But it's cool for right now because she don't really know any of them like that. So I thought it was okay, but I was a little worried. And um, like I said, we've all been through a lot. And it seems like she's still working through some things so my heart went out to her when she was talking about it i definitely understood um let's see what else happened on the show aaron is still being a ladies man with everybody you know he touching legs a little too long he hugging on everybody and it's funny because all the women are drawn to aaron and we keep saying that we not about that and it ain't got to be the brother with all the looks. It ain't got to be the brother that's this or I could date a corny dude. But look who you guys are attracted to. Look who everybody is flocking to. Look who everybody always wants to talk to. The same type of dude. And this is no disrespect to Aaron because he is who he is. But y'all got to quit. We got to quit chasing a certain type of man but then expecting different. We got to date a guy that's outside of your comfort zone or not really your type try something different because you never know what could happen and this is not me saying you got to date an old ugga booger no i'm just saying to try something different for example you know chris is not the finest dude but he was cool and he you know had a lot of charisma he was a pastor okay and he made sure to let the ladies know he was waiting you know to give up that wang <laughs> <laughs> until he got married melinda wasn't with it but stormy was you know so there's somebody there for everybody and let me just add in i, I wouldn't mind meeting somebody who was willing to wait like if we were on the same page because y'all know i was celibate for five years and um if i could meet somebody on the same page i would definitely be down for the wait you know i, I would need to know that the, you know <laughs> i would need i need to talk to some of your past girlfriends to know what i'm getting into but yeah you know, I would definitely be willing to wait, but I don't know, you guys. It's just, I just saw a lot of things going on with the ladies that I just was like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Now, if you're going to be on a dating show, you got to move a little bit differently. And I think that's why I like Ashley so much, too, because she was like, I'm not about the hype. I'm about just finding somebody genuine. So, yeah, yeah she's definitely been through some things. She's, she's dated the type and she know the type. And girl, I'm starting to think we dated the same person. <laughs> And uh, who else, you guys, that I wanted to mention? Kiba. Kiba. Kifa. Um, I don't like him. No. I don't <laughs> I don't like him. And he actually ends up getting eliminated on the second episode. So fine. I, I just felt like he was a little bit arrogant. Um, you know, kind of bragging on himself. And I just, I ain't got time for that. But that again, 
just goes to show what happens when you only look at the outward because y'all would have known that about Kiva, Kiva, whoever, if y'all was really, really talking to him. But I think y'all was looking at what he had going on. African chocolate skin, all of that. Um, when he went on a date with baby girl who didn't drink, I was cool with her not drinking, but he gonna say he don't trust people who don't drink. That don't even make sense. So later for him, who she really should have been out with was Pastor Chris because she got to talking about her bishop and all of that and carrying on. I said, see, see, you was drawn to some looks when you really could have been drawn to somebody who was more compatible for you. But you see, you see what happened when you leave the door open? <laughs> date a guy that's outside of your comfort zone or not really your type. Try something different because you never know what could happen. And this is not me saying you got to date an old ugga booger. No, I'm just saying to try something different. For example, you know, Chris is not the finest dude, but he was cool and he, you know, had a lot of charisma. He was a pastor, okay, and he made sure to let the ladies know he was waiting, you know, to give up that wang. <laughs> <laughs> until he got married melinda wasn't with it but stormy was you know so there's somebody there for everybody and let me just add in i, I wouldn't mind meeting somebody who was willing to wait like if we were on the same page because y'all know i was celibate for five years and um if i could meet somebody on the same page i would definitely be down for the wait you know i, I would need to know that the you know <laughs> i would need i need to talk to some of your past girlfriends to know what i'm getting into but yeah you know, I would definitely be willing to wait, but I don't know, you guys. It's just, I just saw a lot of things going on with the ladies that I just was like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Now, if you're going to be on a dating show, you got to move a little bit differently. And I think that's why I like Ashley so much, too, because she was like, I'm not about the hype. I'm about just finding somebody genuine. So, yeah, yeah she's definitely been through some things. She, she's dated the type and she know the type. And girl, I'm starting to think we dated the same person. <laughs> And uh, who else, you guys, that I wanted to mention? Kiba. Kiba. Kifa. Um, I don't like him. No. I don't, <laughs> I don't like him. And he actually ends up getting eliminated on the second episode. So fine. I, I just felt like he was a little bit arrogant. Um, you know, kind of bragging on himself. And I just, I ain't got time for that. But that, again, just goes to show what happens when you only look at the outward. Because y'all would have known that about Kiva, Kiva, whoever, if y'all was really, really talking to him. But I think y'all was looking at what he had going on. African chocolate skin, all of that. Um, when he went on a date with baby girl who didn't drink, I was cool with her not drinking, but he gonna say he don't trust people who don't drink. That don't even make sense. So later for him, who she really should have been out with was Pastor Chris, because she got to talking about her bishop and all of that and carrying on. I said, see, See, you was drawn to some looks when you really could have been drawn to somebody who was more compatible for you. But you see, you see what happened when you leave the door open? <laughs> you guys, I feel like I'm leaving the part out. Michael, mm, Michael's just okay for me. He is very attractive, but he, again, is another one of those dudes who, um, I do believe he practices, he said, the Ife, Ife religion. And I thought that that was the same religion that my friend practiced because she also also practiced a religion based in Africa. But when I w went and read up on it, I don't I don't think it's the same thing. But I like the fact that he said it's not a religion that judges other religions, but um, you know it does have some different traditions, and it's almost like he's testing all the ladies to see, you know, if their thought processes line up together. Which there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm always leery of a man that's trying to figure out these bullet points on you. These specific, very specific bullet points. Because I feel like if they're feeling you enough, they'll date you and then they'll try to change them. You know, if you're not their religion, they'll try to change your religion. If, you know, you wear a lot of makeup and they don't like it, they're going to try to change that. If you wear weave and they don't want you to wear weave, they see it, they're going to try to change that. So they're not really going to accept you for who you are, but they're going to see how much you are willing to make changes in order to please them. Because even when he told the girl, well, you know, we could just teach our kids both and let them choose. So you would be cool with something like that. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I would be cool with that. Or the woman who wears a lot of makeup. He was just like, well, you know, just take it all off. 
you know, you would you would be straight, you know, with just taking it off, right? You're beautiful, so you know you don't need to wear it. So you'd be cool with not wearing it, right? It's almost like he's trying to see what he can change about you to get you to become more of the standard of woman that he wants. And I've dated guys like that, and I don't like that. Like, you either accept me for who I am. I can tweak and make some changes, but I'm not trying to change you, so don't be trying to change me. If you're not comfortable with the woman I am at the gate, then I'm just not the type of woman know what you think about ready to love go ahead and watch it on the own network and uh pastor chris i told y'all he got eliminated right so sad so sad so now you just got all the same type of dude on there pretty much but we'll see what's coming up and i'll talk to y'all soon bye